You are Locked On Texas Tech, your daily podcast on the Texas Tech Red Raiders. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Great to be with you again on Locked On Texas Tech on the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. And today's episode brought to you by FanDuel. New customers can place a $5 bet. You'll get started with $150 in bonus bets if your first $5 bet hits. So visit FanDuel.com to get started with the only Chris Level. I'm Casey Cowan, back for this reaction episode. Looking back to Stillwater, Oklahoma, where the Red Raiders get a road win uh, to preserve a winning road record for the season, and they do it in very offensive fashion. Uh, One of those reminiscent of some uh, years gone by in the Big 12 Conference, Chris. And, you know, I say at the end of the day, it was a fun ball game because it was back and forth, a lot of fireworks, uh, very competitive, but that's also because uh, at the end of the day, the team I wanted to prevail prevailed. So uh, there's some, I guess, uh, grinding of the teeth and pulling your hair out at various moments too, but the good guys win at the end of the day, and that's the headline you can't get around. Yeah, you know, and uh, as I watched, uh, you know, obviously this one in person and, and other games around the league, even the teams that are just out of it or don't have anything to play for, it's just you you, you kind of want a team to just show up and like hey man y'all can just have it you know like y'all you know we're we're, we're going to check out and that and none of that is happening i mean i like i watched utah uh just give iowa state all that they wanted there at home and then oklahoma state and it was it was the student section was not full cuz classes have let out but it it was still uh, a pretty much juiced up atmosphere and that place gives me PTSD because the Red Raiders just never seemingly play well. I mean you go back to I mean you you know like 07 when when it just hits Crabtree right the, you know uh, in the face mask or through his hands uh BJ Simmons got into a shootout in in 03 I guess it was and and couldn't come away with a win and you know, Baron Morton got into a shootout uh, two years ago up there and couldn't, uh, you know, now he got dinged up throughout that game and that affected it. But I just, so we, we had touched on this last week, you know, wondered, okay, man, do, do, you, do you see, you know, like you saw two years ago and you start to air it out a little bit, lo and behold, that's kind of what you got. And you, you, you ran a lot of tempo. Uh, you ran a lot more plays uh, on offense than, than than they did, and I thought Barron, um, you know, and I think you kind of you, you slowed it down or ran it more. I don't think you slowed it down, but you ran it uh, quite a bit. But uh, but you get up fourteen nothing, and you just can't you can't hold it because you give up two monster uh, plays, um, and that and then then here we go because if you are. If you go up seventeen or twenty-one, nothing. I just wonder if you do see a whole bunch of quit. But right at the point where you can kind of like you know nail it shut, it's like somebody takes away the hammer and goes, "Not so fast, not so fast." You're going to be yep. in for a long day, Chris and Red Raider faithful. We're going to put you in. You know, we're going to test that blood pressure and test that heart, and uh, we're, we're going to test your emotions. And all that, but like four hours later, uh, thankfully, you're right. The good guys won. Yeah, it started off with a couple of TDs for the Red Raiders, then a couple of TDs to follow, and then you would alternate touchdowns the rest of the way until a Jacob Rodriguez fumble recovery, which uh, ultimately proves to be the distance. So uh, for ticket value's sake, was one of the more entertaining games of the year. And look, I, I know what Oklahoma State's record is in the Big 12 Conference. It's over. I know what they've been this season. They're a team that hadn't what won a game since September. But there was a reason Vegas only had this as a, a three-and-a-half to three-point uh, margin going into it. The Red Raiders do cover that. But, Chris, I'm thinking, you know, on any given day, in your home stadium on senior day with a two-decade vet of a head coach, who's had the success that Mike Gundy could have. You could see how this could be tricky for the type of team, obviously, that Texas Tech has been, which has been um, inconsistent, I think, for the most part, in the sense you've seen good things, then you've also seen some letdown things. Um, So I'm glad that Texas Tech goes on the road. They get this win. I don't care about the style point aspect of it at this point in the season. You're just trying to continue to stack wins and uh, improve your bowl game standing. But I thought it took a lot of guts because you did see, as you alluded to there, kind of that, familiar beginning to a ball game we've become accustomed to uh, where you get off to a decent start you kind of lose the rope for some period of time 
Well, on occasion, we haven't seen Tech really respond well on the other side of that period, but uh, they got right back to it and did it. And I thought the offensive aspect was really interesting because you talk about firing through the air, which was a lot of fun to watch because it was working very, very well. But I loved how they never went all the way away from Taj Brooks. It was kind of tough sledding to get things started, but you weren't going to win this game without Taj Brooks doing his thing. So you had to continue to go back to it. And uh, eventually we saw that open up and pay off with some bigger plays. Yeah, you know, and and, and I think uh, I, I thought Taj maybe would have a bit of an easier time uh, because this is a this is a uh, Oklahoma State rushing defense that has just not been very good at all, and and yet you 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 struggled a bit, uh, but then on that fourth and one, I think he he busted off his longest rush of the year, which is forty yards. And it was the same play that they called against Iowa State that that won it, and uh, that was the. Uh, Brooks Jalen Conyers high five on the way into the end zone, which is awesome. And then you got the whole, you know, like the, the thumbs down deal, which apparently I had not seen it, but apparently they were all doing it and they had gone to see uh, Gladiator 2 yeah. on Friday night. And I guess there's a Mercy or no Mercy. In it's life. the Joaquin Phoenix. I don't yeah. know who's doing it in the second one, but the original. Yeah. Yeah. There you go. So, uh, but. Yeah, I, I and Taj was just a monster in this game. I just like he's going to be very, very difficult to replace, uh, because I mean the the grab that he makes at the end of the half to to put you up seven, unbelievable catch. And it, and it may not like have looked on TV like it was that tough, but it's almost like he's catching the back end of the football. Uh, because it it just kind of dropped in there and and you know but you just couldn't I mean heck Cowan uh, you you couldn't stop him and that was very disheartening you couldn't stop him so when I walked to the locker room with Joey McGuire he said I'm just so frustrated he says we get up fourteen nothing we get our fast start and he goes and boom long play boom long play and and then you and he was excited about you go up um, you go up twenty one fourteen. And then what do you do right out of the locker room? It's like four plays, 90-something yards, and they're into the end zone again, tie game. It's like you just couldn't ever – but but there's something to say about you just never quit throwing punches. You you kept uh, answering, and you kept answering, and you mixed in – I mean, th- th- there was some mixed in for both uh, parties here, but and maybe it's one and the same, but th- there's some 0-7 – they got mixed in with, I mean, like some the high snap, you yeah. know, it, it almost burned them in the first half, but in the second half it burned them. But like, then you mix in a, the block extra point. I mean, like th- th- those are subtle, line, right? Yes. And like, I mean, I, I thought special teams were very good in this game. Uh, now you have nothing to necessarily do with them doinking a field goal, but I thought you're, you know, Dre McCray had a long kickoff return. I thought Kelby Valson with the long onside kick return. I thought your block extra point. Uh, I thought you you got decent punts when you needed decent punts. And there were some times at the end of the game when you needed, you, you know, you, you needed that punt to have some hang time. I thought Stone Harrington, who kicked off for the first time all year, he did kick one out of bounds. And granted, he had lots of practice here. But for his first start since middle school, uh, I think he showed everybody a lot of leg strength. And uh, Kenny Perry would tell you he's like Eddie Calvin the Loosh and Bull Durham. It's like he could throw really hard, but I don't know where it's going. I just don't. And that this was Stone Harrington. So, uh, but for the most part, it went out of the back of the end zone, and that was uh, that was good stuff. But yeah, you you just did enough here to to win. And at the end of the day, you're right, man. I don't care how you you figured out a way to get a result, and that's all that matters. And it's been very difficult for you and your program regardless of head coach, regardless of era, to win in that stadium. And mostly it's because Oklahoma State is usually pretty good. Yeah, no doubt. I thought it was really quite the display also of, um, you know, why you you stick to everything that you're supposed to be sticking to, even if it's been a rough day for you. Because defensively, I mean, you're on skates going backwards all day long, and then you have a chance to make arguably the biggest play of the game. <laughs> And you do it. And I'm not surprised to see Jacob Rod- Rodriguez as the guy that uh, is there on the ball, making sure that it's secure. But, um, you know, when you're having statistically such a wild day, there can be some, you know, discouraging feelings <laughs> within the huddle or on the sideline, Chris. 
But if you don't stay locked in and giving great effort, then you, you may not be there to make um, what was one of the maybe top two or three winning plays uh, that you made on the day. So just, you know, a lot of perseverance. And uh, I know statistically it is not one that you're going to want to uh, remember all that fondly, but you make a huge play when it's there to be made. And uh, so got to give them a pat on the back as well. But the, the offensive display, man, was just it, – it's been a while since I've seen one like that. And, um, you know, I think it was a great opportunity for Baron Morton to really have quite the day. And it was fun to watch him have that kind of day, right? Because we, we know what the path has been like. It's wild that in Stillwater, he really enjoys passing the football. I don't know what's going on there. But, uh, man, I, I think he deserved a day like that. And so it was a lot of fun to watch number two do what he did. Yeah, and I, th I think a lot of it has to do with the fact that typically Oklahoma State plays man-to-man -man coverage. And quarterbacks typically like that if you have good enough weapons on the outside because uh, you just you you attack it and most most teams don't play just straight up man or man free and I think that's mostly what Oklahoma State I have to go back and watch like every snap and see how much they adjust and everything but I think that's what the 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 thought was and I think the same thing two years ago if Mike Gundy if anything he is very stubborn they don't change much they're you know uh, kind of this is what they do and here's the other thing you, you get this uh, freshman quarterback that starts. We talked all week about Alan Bowman. He never stepped on the field. I shook his hand before the game, talked to him after the game, wished him well. He was very gracious. He's like, man, uh, old, old number eight's pretty good, isn't he? I was like, yeah, he is. I was like, uh, Oklahoma State can be in good hands. But, you know, th this was – this, this not being able to stop them was from a true freshman quarterback in his very first start, uh, which was also like – I don't know how that made me feel, um, but um, <laughs> well, I, I guess I do know how it made me feel. Um, maybe I'm still processing that aspect. I'm like, whew, um, it's a lot to a lot to take in. But that that was just one of the storylines. Um, and <clears throat> I told you that I wanted to do this, and it's so much easier to do it after a win. Today's episode brought to you by FanDuel. Get ready to tackle all the action with FanDuel, America's number one sports book. And right now, new customers can bet only $5 and get $150 in bonus bets if you win. The FanDuel Sportsbook app gives you everything you need to place live bets on the NFL and a whole lot more all in one place. So when you get a hunch, a gut instinct in the middle of the game, you can check out the latest stats, view live play-by-play, -play, and so much more all on the same page where you place your bet. Just visit FanDuel.com to join today, and you'll get started with $150 in bonus bets if you win your first $5 bet. That's FanDuel.com. Never waste a gut feeling again, and make every moment more with FanDuel, an official sportsbook partner of the NFL. I told you that I wanted to do this, and it's so much easier to do it after a win. Uh, but, <laughs> I mean, the, the officiating in this league is just really, really bad. It, it, it just is. And here's my main issue with the way that it was dealt with at the end of the game uh, or at the end of the game. There's a couple calls that I think were just bad. There was a – a kick catch interference when there's no fair catch called and you blow up the punter and then he just stands up and runs 60 yards for no apparent reason. Um, and, and, and they're allowing all this to go on, which you know, he should have been down right there. The end instead, they throw a flag. It, it, it's just not. Um, then the other one was a hold on Mo Horn, I think. And then no intentional grounding that there's no hold there. And then there's no intentional grounding. Okay. But what, what really, set me off is the giving Oklahoma state an extra timeout. And, and then, and then my main takeaway here that I would have for the league is man, you, you just, you get paid way too much and, and college officials do get compensated extremely well. I don't really say much about high school guys, man, because they're doing it for not much at all. They take a lot of grief. It's a difficult thing. College folks, they, they get paid extremely well, extremely well. And they're trained and they, they are signed off on and all that stuff. But for you not to tell everybody what is going on it, it is just embarrassing. Uh, and, and it creates the optics of that you don't know what you're doing. And in this case, I don't think that they did. There, there's this timeout called. The clock is stopped. 
uh, because Taj Brooks has tape hanging off or his helmet came off. So they're not going to let him back in the game. But it's like, who called the timeout? They talk and they talk and there's a huddle and there's lots of booing going on. Well, and we're all like wondering, why is the clock stopped? Who called the timeout? But nobody ever tells you anything. We look up on the, all the video boards. They, they Oklahoma State had, had two timeouts left. Well, they take one timeout off. And I'm like, okay, well, they still haven't told us that Oklahoma State called timeout, but they've adjusted it. So they just have the one timeout left. Then we go back and huddle up. And we put it back on the board, and, and it's you never get any description on why the clock was stopped. And so Joey finally says, I want to call timeout because I, you won't let Taj Brooks go back into the game. And by the way, why am I having to call timeout? Why did the clock ever stop? But this game is nip and tuck, as we know, unfortunately so. And and yet they got a they got a fourth timeout. And like I don't and and no still, and I asked Joey after the game, I'm like. What explanation did you did you get? He's like, yeah, they they didn't really give me one. They couldn't, and, and see that, you know, I, I what I've appreciated about college basketball is that they will now come over to the microphone at the replay table. They will tell the crowd. They will tell the announcers. They'll come over to the TV table when I'm doing TV and be like, okay, here's what we've got, and why. And there's none of that here, and it's just unfortunate because. There's a lot on these games, man, and a lot of people care. There's a lot of money flowing through this stuff, and the guys just got to be better. But just tell everybody what's going on is the main thing. Don't don't shroud it in secrecy or hide from the moment. You're getting paid way too much money to – so, anyway, there's my rant there. But uh, I'm glad Tech, Texas Tech overcame uh, the, you know, shenanigans there because it was and, – and one more thing. Sorry, I thought I was done. When, when a player throws a punch – like Ollie Gordon did, not once, but twice, that's got to be an ejection. I think that's in the rule book. I think, yeah, you throw the flag, but when you throw a punch, man, you're, you're gone. And yet he's allowed to come back in the game and like have an effect on the game. And I, I had an issue with that too, all because uh, he didn't like it that Jacob Rodriguez recovered the fumble in the end zone on his senior day, and he's not even a senior. You know, suck it up, zero. Have you know, like, like let let's let's hone in the emotions there. You're not going to do that in the NFL, or you will get dealt with. Now, they will deal with you from the league wide, and some veteran on your team is going to go handle you in the locker room and tell you, "Yeah, we don't do that here. This is a big boy league, but it shouldn't be allowed in the Big Twelve football either." Okay, sorry, I'm done. Yeah, that was a little surprising that that was just kind of uh, passed by and yeah, okay, he's still in the game. Uh, whatever. MVPs for Texas Tech. Um, you've got offensive choices. Maybe there's a, a defensive name that comes to mind, but uh, who you name oh. them first and, and who's on the list? First, today's episode brought to you by Game Time. Never sweat buying tickets to your favorite event again with Game Time. It's always a breeze using the Game Time app where you're going to find the best last minute deals. And I love being able to scout out a view from any seat before pulling the trigger. Of course, you're always doing it at the lowest price guaranteed. Game time has deals on tickets right up to the start of the event and even an hour after it begins, which means you can finish off that final brat, that final beer at your own pace at the tailgate because game time is the place to find last minute seats to any event. Game time gives you the fastest and easiest way to buy tickets, but not just fast, also secure and simple to use. So right now, download the Game Time app and create an account and use our promo code Locked On College for $20 off your first purchase. Terms do apply. Again, create an account and redeem our code Locked On College for $20 off. Download the Game Time app today for last minute tickets at the lowest price guaranteed. MVPs for Texas Tech. Um, you've got offensive choices. Maybe there's a, a defensive name that comes to mind, but uh, who you name oh. them first and, and who's on the list? Oh, th th this is Taj and, and Jacob. I mean, and, and what what are you going to do when these guys aren't here? Because and I and I thought Barron played really well. Um, I thought the 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 you ended up having to do it again, but I thought the quarterback draw on third and 11 by Baron Morton at the very end of the game, when you're trying to just bleed the clock and get, get first downs. I thought I was like big giant, hairy. Yes. Um, and I, I, I was, uh, who's are we talking about? Where was that called? Is there any chance it's on the field or is that from the sideline? Oh no, that was uh that was called from the sideline. I think, you know, told, you know, Hey, look, look for this. And then, and then just kind of, you know, he made a play. Uh, but 
Um, I, uh, I, I appreciated that, but back to, I don't want to bury the lead, get back to Taj. I just thought he was, you know, like 200 all purpose yards is four first first time his career when he's got four touchdowns <clears throat> and his yards per carry are somewhat modest. I mean, other folks around the league had, had plenty more, but it was when he made these plays, it was the, the moments and we all know, and we're seeing it. You're not great. You, you're plenty flawed. Now you're beat up. You, you, you know, he, he's just making a lot uh, out of nothing at times, making great plays and grinding away. He's been so durable, all the stuff. And I just think he deserves a lot of credit here. But man, is he going to be tough to replace? Um, because he, he's a margin for error guy. He, he widens your margin for error on these games. And I thought Jacob Rodriguez, I mean, you hate to say it like this, but man, you're you're not that you are, but you've played very average in a lot of spots on defense, except for the the spot that Jacob is playing, because he continues to show up in the stat sheet and he continues to make meaningful plays. And it's not just the interception; it's um, you know he had the 13 tackles. He was the one that recovers the 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 high snap, and it just seems like he just has a nose for the football, man. Um, and, and he, you know, he even suplexed the guy, which, uh, elicited some reaction from the, uh, the Stillwater faithful and Hey man, what do you want him to do? So some style points on top. I'd like sure. to hear that. Could have, he could have, um, he could have DDT the guy like Jake, the snake Roberts back in the day, but instead he, uh, he just went, uh, with a nice clean suplex, which is not a finishing maneuver. Okay. It's just, uh, in the middle of the match type type maneuver here, but he got it done. I think when we talk about guys who have a nose for the ball or uh, their ball hawks or whatever, it just always starts with great effort. And obviously he plays with that, oh, yeah. puts himself in a position to be around again, like I said earlier, when those plays are there to be made. And uh, it was cool to see him have that big moment <clears throat> to help get the win. Um, otherwise, offensively, you know, the pass catchers, um, Caleb Douglas, Corey Aiken, Jalen Conyers, our guy Mason Tharp uh, gets into the end zone. So there were several having a lot of fun uh, in the passing game. Yeah, I mean, yeah, sp- spread it out. Um, it, it, it was uh, um, it, it was just a kind of a complete effort. Um, you know, you took on some water with your offensive line as the game would go along a little bit. Porsche was replaced by Nick Fadig, I think, due to cramping. But, you know, and so that group, could, you know, but you, you, you're utilizing all your tight ends. Uh, I thought Jacoby Williams, you know, got in the mix. And that was one where – I think there's a screen. You're up 14 nothing, and there's a screen, and he just kind of takes his eyes off the ball or just drops it, and he had a ways to run. And I that's the that's kind of the 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 part where it could have teetered to where you could have ended it uh, if he takes that and goes you know 20 yards. But it's a drop. It's I think you end up punting. And now we're now we're in in getting ourselves into a shootout, but uh, but yeah, I don't mean to end that on a on a what if, but yeah, you did you spread it around. It was it was good stuff, uh, you know. And Josh Kelly wasn't anywhere near the biggest, you know, statistically the guy. And you know, I, I think it was kind of fun to see all these other guys eat a little bit. Uh, but uh, yeah, your tight end certainly played a huge part. It was kind of the culmination of of some of those offensive trends all year long, where you'd have some of these other guys who are uh, not Josh Kelly or Taj Brooks. Um, you know, with more and more opportunity to make some plays. And so you got to kind of see them all on display, whether it's Douglas or Aiken or uh, Jalen Conyers also. So it's just a lot of fun to watch. And uh, again, it ends with the right result. So uh, we even double up even more so on the fun. And it keeps some things in play that we'll be talking about as we uh, kick off the week on the next edition of Locked On Texas Tech. So Chris, appreciate the time as always, man. Enjoyed it and looking forward to that. Winning is better than losing, people. I'll take it every time. Guns up. (laughs) <laughs> and get subscribed on YouTube or anywhere you get podcasts so you never miss an episode. We appreciate you being out there, especially those everydayers. And shout out to the Matador Mobsters as well, celebrating the win with them over the weekend. And if you want to be one of those, you can hit the show notes and find the link for a free 14-day trial. It's your direct line to Chris and myself with one-on-one text sent straight to your phone. For Chris, I'm Casey. Thanks for the time, and we hope to see you back for the next round on Locked On Texas Tech.